Shalom and thank you, Shiv Kumar, Nina, John, Chira, for joining class this morning. Welcome to all our in-person students and to all our e-learning students who will be listening to these lectures later on. We just have two more um, uh, classes before we um, finish this, the end of the semester. I'll ask um, uh, Nikhil to lead us in prayer. And there'll be a lot of background noise, e-learning students. Don't think it's a bomb. It's uh, just, uh, uh, um, yeah, it's crackers. Um, there's a festival here called Diwali. It's celebrated in India. And so part of the celebration, the big part of the celebration is crackers. So you'll hear noises frequently. So please don't think that some bomb is going off here in, <laughs> in the Bible college. OK. OK, I'll ask Nikhil to lead us in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day, for this time, Lord. We worship you, we praise you, Lord. As we're going to restart our class, Lord, help us to understand your word, Father. Help me to teach well, Father, so we can learn your word deeply, Father. Thank you so much once again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Nikhil. So we are going to uh, study chapter 7 today, partnership and uh, co-workers in the kingdom. Um, I think most of the content that is taken in uh, these chapters in this book, Kingdom Builders, is already presented in Code of Honor, which we studied, which you all studied in the first year, uh, the first semester. And I taught you the same thing, so I know most of the content is repeated here, but we will just go through it because I think some of our e-learning students uh, haven't um, might, might have not signed up for the course on Minister's Foundation. Okay. So what is, uh, who do we co-work with? As kingdom builders, who do we co-work with? God and people, right? Um, can you hear me? No voice? You're saying no voice, madam. You can't hear me? Yes, it's on. Uh, but Shiv Kumar is saying is he can't hear me. Okay, the, I think the others are able to hear me, uh, Shiv Kumar. Nina, John, can you hear me? Yeah. Chira, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Shiv Kumar, I think you need to, uh, you know, increase your audio or unmute mute the audio in your laptop. Yeah, so everyone else can hear me. Thank you. Yeah. So we co-work with God and with uh, people. Okay. Uh, why is co-working important? Is co-working important in the kingdom of God? God has given us different ministry assignments, calling, functions. But why do we have to co-work, co-partner with each other? The mic is there. Yeah. Uh, because he need us to work to the extension of his kingdom, he needs us here. Okay, he God needs us. Okay, but why should we co work with other people? The gospel is always gospel is always for people. Please take the mic so that our uh, online students can hear. Then working independently, it will be better to work with others to just uh, spread the gospel. Okay, other than working independently, it's better to work with others to spread the gospel. Okay. Why is it important for us to partner and co-work with others? Because we're all one body of Christ. We are all one body uh, uh, in Christ. Okay. What else? We can also um, like accomplish more, reach more goals. Yeah. Yes, we can um, accomplish more than we can do it single-handedly, right? Uh, what does partnering mean? What does partnering mean? To work. to work with somebody, coming together. Okay, what else? We have the same Having the same vision and doing it together. Okay. Partnering is basically helping each other. It is more complementing each other, right? What is the meaning of complementing? Yes. Yes. You can use the mic, please. You can do something and somebody else has some other gifts. Like he said, Prince said, we are in the body of Christ. We have different functions, different gifts. So you have different gifts. He has different gifts. 
and you both come together and you complement each other. So it's it is complementing each other and it is not competing with each other. We always think that partnership is working together with others in the in building God's kingdom is more like competing with each other, right? It's not competing with each other, but it is complementing each other. Okay. Um, so uh, why is it also important for us to uh, you know partner with each other is because we can do much greater work uh, uh, together okay then single handedly i think more uh, so much of kingdom work is left undone because we are not co partnering co partnering or co working with um, one another Okay, and also uh, we find that God has designed us. How has He designed us? Uh, Jackin says two are better than one. When one falls, the other lifts them up. Yes. Um, also, we see that God has designed us to be people who are partnering with one another. He has designed us that way. Okay. Even though God has given us uh, individual functions or individual callings and ministries uh, that he wants us to do, we also see that God wants us to partner with each other, right? And uh, remember, we learned in Code of Honor that God sends people into our uh, lives, into our visions, into our dreams, okay? And uh, why does he send people into our visions and our dreams? So that they can help us in fulfilling God's vision and dream for our lives. And in the process, God is building them and God is also going to enable them to, you know, uh, start their own uh, ministries. Also, uh, why does, uh, sometimes God takes us into different uh, other people's uh, ministries or different ministries, different organizations, or he causes us to step into other people's dreams and visions. Why? To learn, to co-partner with them, to complement them, to give off our resources and our uh, gifts and also to um, learn. Okay. So um, when we are co-partnering or co-working with others in the kingdom of God, what is it? In, what is the kind of mindset that we need to have? We have to have kingdom mindset. What is kingdom mindset? Yeah, this is not just my ministry. I'm not here to build my business. I'm not here to. It's God's work. Yes. Uh, keep that mic uh, in the center so that anyone who wants to speak can just take it. And yeah, it's not my kingdom. It's not my ministry. I'm not building my business, but I'm building the kingdom of um, God. Okay. So what happens when you're kingdom minded? God's kingdom is furthered, it's extended, there's a fast pace in where things are going. What else? There's unity and oneness. Is there unity and oneness when we co-partner and co-work with others? Is there unity? Actually, it should be like that, okay? Uh, Anand says, actually, it should be like that. Mike, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there should be... Uh... There would there will be unity if we have the kingdom mindset and we are working yes, together at the same true. time. Yes, true. If we have the kingdom mindset, we operate, then we will have the unity. But it's also the word of God says that it's 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 difficult. So we need to pursue peace. As long as it's possible with you, pursue peace. Keep the bond of peace. Keep the unity. Okay, so very, very um, important. We are called to be united. Okay. Um, look at what Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 says. Endeavoring to keep the Ephesians 4 3. What does it say? Ephesians 4 3 and Philippians 2 1. Read. Ephesians 4 3. 4, 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the body of in the bond, in the of, bond of peace. Philippians 2 1. Therefore, it is the, therefore, if there is any consolation. consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy. Yes. So here, 
you know, uh, it says keep the unity of the spirit and the fellowship of the spirit. Two things. Okay. So true kingdom building uh, is, or the true kingdom building work is basically, you know, results in two things. Okay. It results in the unity of the spirit and it results in the fellowship of the spirit. Fellowship in the spirit. Two things. Okay. And even as we go about building God's kingdom, if you have the kingdom mindset, you know, it helps, like you all said, advancing the kingdom. It helps to strengthen unity, uh, the fellowship of the spirit, and also, uh, you know, um, uh, in, a, in a fast pace, advancing the kingdom of God. Okay. What are some of the challenges we face when, um, you know, we co-work or co-partner with others in building God's kingdom? What are some of the challenges we face? Miscommunication, Anand says. The mic is there, yes. Miscommunication, misunderstanding. Quarreling, jealousy. Quarreling, jealousy, okay. Difference in opinions. Difference in doctrines, okay. Huh? Insecurities, yes, thank you. Okay, so all of these are, can be challenges. And sometimes when we are working with the kingdom mindset, uh, there can be others who are not working with the kingdom mindset. Other leaders and pastors and uh, leaders of organizations, they will be looking for, you know, as if to say, they're running their own business. You know, it's their church. You know, they are not kingdom minded. They're not looking at how their church, their ministry, their organization can help in enhancing the kingdom of God in the city and in the nations. And what happens when you are kingdom minded and others are not kingdom minded? Is it easy to walk together? No. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together unless they are, they agree. Okay. It's not, it's, it's like when you are the, you know, uh, plowing a field, you have an ox and a donkey. Is it possible to put an ox and a donkey together to plow the field? No, they can't walk together. So it becomes like, uh, that and like uh, Anand said, there are doctrines. Okay, so doctrines come because of different denominations, and that's why I think co-working or co-partnering is very different because there are different uh, doctrines and different de denominations. Okay, but even though there are different denominations and different um, uh, doctrines, is it uh, possible for us to co-work with each other? What do you all think? Okay, Rin says yes. Why do yes, you say yes? We can. Why? Even though we have different doctrines in different denominations, why is it easy for us to co-partner? Nina uh, Santosh says no. Okay, Anand says practically no. What about our online students? What do you all think? Please use the mic. So okay, it doesn't matter even if you're wrong. Go ahead. Like from what Paul tells me, ignore each other mistakes or like <laughs> encourage each other. We can only like we should not. Uh, we can tell them, but we should not make them feel uh, they are doing wrong. Something like that. Okay. Uh, encourage them, but. Um, you know when they, uh, but when you correct their sin do it in uh, with patience in goodness with the goodness of god in love okay uh, without getting uh, making others offensive we can work together okay don't uh, offend anybody without being offensive without being a stumbling block without judging them okay uh, uh, i think when there is a doctrinal difference it's not easy to talk to them Okay. But uh, with the Holy Spirit, it is easy to work with them. It is not easy. It's not easy to not work easy with to them. work with them uh, if there is a doctrinal difference because mm. they the minute they they we say what they don't believe they say no mm. you're wrong mm. that there is of the unity has gone. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. But uh, again, when we have the kingdom minded, we can be a little more humbler and mm. humble and you know can teach them in a different way. Maybe slowly they'll open their eyes. Okay. Prabhu says, yes, if the faith is the same. Yes, I think that is very important, right? It's we are not coming together in unity on doctrines, but we are coming together in unity in the faith. Who is our faith in? Jesus. Yeah, oh, we have one God, okay? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Is, and then we have one Holy Spirit, 
uh, we have, you know, uh, one cross, the, the cross of Jesus Christ. There's only the blood of Jesus Christ that has sanctified us, has cleanses us and purifies us. Okay, what else is one faith that we have? One word of God that we have? Okay, so all of these are common uh, platforms or foundations that we have built our doctrines on. Okay, so as far as the faith is the same, we can, it's, yes, it is possible for all, all of us to come together and work together because we're believing in the same God, believing the same word that's uh, 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 written for us in the Bible, I believe the same Holy Spirit, the finished work of the cross, the same blood, that same blood of Jesus Christ that sanctifies, cleanses us, purifies us, forgives us. So all of this is common denominator, foundation that we have built our doctrines in. So I think it is possible, yes, to come together in unity and oneness, even though we have different, uh, you know, doctrines, different styles of worship, different liturgies in worship, we can still come together in unity and um, oneness. Okay. Huh. No, no, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Let the online students hear. Yes. Um, but pastor, when I seen um, the minute we talk about any rosary or I mean something, any touch, if you touch that thing, I have seen people who are close to our families and no, don't talk. Uh, so that rosary and all is part of uh, not the same faith, right? You're talking about the Catholic faith. Uh, okay. uh, so when our faith is not same, it's difficult, uh, Nina. Yes, we're here we're talking about. Uh, that's what he's Prabhu saying. When the faith is common, our faith believes is common, but our doctrine that is built on it or liturgy or styles of worship can be different. But the faith, same faith we have. Yeah, but there also we are believing the same Jesus, same cross, everything. But not the same word, right? Word. Uh, word. Uh, word. They have ex little extra uh, books are there. Yeah, but the whole concept is for the Catholics is very different, no? That you go through uh, to God through not just through Jesus but Mary. Huh? So that is, and the, uh, uh, they believe Jesus is God, but also Mary is also God. But we believe uh, co-equal with God, yes. But we believe only in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay. Ah, so what is not from of God, you can't work with, they won't come together with you on the same wavelength because it's not the same Holy Spirit that is working. Okay. So yes, we come together on the same faith and not the same uh, doctrine. Okay. Uh, even though the doctrines are uh, different, we can come together because our faith is um, same. Okay. So um, we see that uh, another uh, important thing to keep in mind is even though we have different callings, uh, different ministries that God enables us to start, we are pastoring different churches, you know, uh, we need to understand that all of it should be done in the broader framework of the kingdom of God. We're all here to build the kingdom of God, whether it's a Christian NGO, a Christian ministry, Christian organization, a local church, you know, uh, house, church, whatever we need to understand or be of this mindset that we belong to the kingdom of God. We are part of the kingdom of God. And whatever God has given to us, we are here to build and further the kingdom of um, God. So, you know, the kingdom of God uh, should supersede our individual callings, dreams, visions, function that God has uh, given to us. Because Matthew 6, 3 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That means we keep the kingdom of God first before we put our calling, our functions, our ministry, and, uh, you know, our personal um, advancement. Um, and when we do that, we're actually dying to self. Okay. One way of dying to self is to see that God has given me, entrusted me this ministry or this church, um, and not just as a business, not just as something that I need to build on, not my kingdom, okay, but to build a, have a bigger picture of building the kingdom of God. Okay. So even as we partner with each other and, and connect with each other, we need to learn that, like Prince said, that we all belong to the body of Christ. And we have one head. Who is the head? 
Jesus Christ. And we are here all together to come together with our different functions. You know, in the body of Christ, God has given us different functions. Some are called to preach, teach, uh, administer, apostles, prophets, you know, helpers, different membership gifts, different ministry gifts, the fivefold ministry gifts are all given for what? Why are the fivefold ministry gifts given to us? Equipping of the saints. Thank you. And for the edification of the saints for building them up so we are here to strengthen edify build the saints the believers in the body of christ so that they are basically equipped they are positioned and they are released into their calling uh, so that they can also function properly and effectively in the body of christ okay um now we need to also understand that even as we are uh, you know, build a co-partnering in God's work or in God's kingdom, you know, uh, like Paul says in John chapter 4, uh, sorry, uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 um, verses uh, 5 to 8, and also we read in John chapter 4 verse 37, one sows and another reaps, right? One sows and another reaps. Look at what John chapter 4 verse 38 says. Can somebody read that? John chapter 4, verse 38. I send you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. Yeah, so sometimes God sends us to labor in other people's, uh, you know, dreams, vision, their feel, their calling. Okay, and uh, we can enter into their ministries or God sends us uh, you know, uh, to labor where somebody else has, you know, um, has uh, has dug the ground, done the foundation work, has sown. And maybe you're going in a time where you need to, you know, um, uh, take care of the plants, you know, basically water it and make it grow. Or maybe you are going, God sends you to a place where somebody has already laid the foundation and the growth has already taken place and you're going at a time of the harvest okay so you it can also be that or it can be that God, you enter into somebody else's field or somebody else's ministry in different um, seasons okay so uh, God, uh, in John chapter 4 you know uh, it says one sows and another reaps look at what Paul says in 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 8 he says uh, who planted Paul planted, he says, I planted, so it says Paul planted, and who's watered? Apollos. And who gave the increase? God who gave the increase. So why is it mentioning this here to the church at Corinth? Use the mind. That disunity in the church, some were telling we are of Paul, we are of Apollos. Yes, there was a division, some people saying I'm following Apollos, some people are saying Paul. And so here, you know, Paul is saying, hey, I came and uh, planted and Apollos caused the growth. But who gave the increase? It's God who gives the increase. Now, look at what verse 8 says. Can somebody read that? 1 Corinthians 3 verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Yes. So suppose you are somebody who's doing the hard ground work, of laboring hard and doing the foundation work. Okay. And then you God cause asks you to leave that and you know he you start an old ministry or you or takes you somewhere else and God sends somebody else there to uh, you know to make cause growth. You know you have done the groundwork, you've sown the seeds, somebody else caused them to grow. Okay. Now some God removes that person in the from the growth season and takes them elsewhere, plants them elsewhere in, in their own ministry or to somebody else's ministry. And he brings somebody else to this place and it's ta time of harvest. Now who do you think is uh, great? All of them are equal. Whether you are uh, doing the hard, laborious, uh, dirty job of digging, you know, and sowing, or whether you're doing the job of causing growth, or whether you're doing the work of just, you know, reaping the harvest, all of them are equal in the sight of 
God and God values each one's work equally. And also what we need to do is we need to also respect people who have labored before us. So if you're going in the growth stage, don't think all the growth is happening because of your hard work or because you are super spiritual. Okay. What should you do? You should respect, honor and credit and appreciate people who have done uh, the labor before us. If you're going to harvest time, which is very easy, the harvest is there and you are very excited. Oh, wow. Just one month, two months and I'm just harvesting. But, you know, you need to recognize and appreciate who has started the work, who has sown, who has dug, who has labored, who has caused the growth. Okay. So very important. So even as we uh, enter into other people's, the sun, we need to acknowledge and honor them. And sometimes, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, when God gives us a ministry, we don't see fruit. Why? Why don't we see fruit? Uh, no, we have done the hard work, but we don't see the growth happening or we don't see the harvest. It depends upon the seasons, Anand says. Maybe some issues are like... Uh, how uh, they are leading the church also. Okay. How, how they are leading the church. Because we fail to understand that, you know, uh, the way of kingdom building is partnering. So if God is sending people into our labor, into our ministries, and what do we do? We chase them away. Right? Uh, we don't honor them. We don't respect them. We don't, um, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 we don't appreciate their gifting and their um, calling. And then, you know, there is no growth happening. And we're wondering why there is no, what we have sown is not springing up. One of the reasons could be that we have not uh, treated the people or respected or honored um, or helped them, uh, those God has sent into our labor or into our ministries, uh, people who have come to labor along with us. Okay, so it's very important for us how we care for people who God sends, how we recognize them, how we uh, co work with them, and also it's important for us when God sends us into others, other people's field and labor, how we uh, honor God in respecting others and how we work with. Um, others. But at the same time, we need to be careful on the kind of people that we, you know, partner with, yes, accept into our ministries, not just think, okay, come, God has sent this person, so take them. We need to have clarity. Of course, ask the leading of the Holy Spirit, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Also, why is it, why should we guard or why should we, care, we be careful who we take into our ministry? Or the our, the calling that God has given to us. Why is it important for us to guard the kind of people? Uh, they can be uh, wolf sheep in. Okay, they can be wolves in sheep clothing. Okay, good. What else? They might not be kingdom minded, so their influence will not uh, affect, it will, the wrong influence will, yes, and you will, thank you, Rin, you will find it, uh, you know, you'll find it, you're most of the time fighting against them, right? What else? They may, they may be having a selfish motives to grow for their own interest. Yes, very true. Selfish motives, selfish ag agendas. You know, and they're coming there to sow in because of selfish interest. They sow discord, disunity, and uh, so it's uh, sometimes even false, uh, you know, uh, preachers and false doctrines they can uh, they can bring in. Okay, and also sometimes they can also be ministers of Satan. Okay, Satan can also uh, you know um, uh, mask himself or dress up as you know uh, somebody of the, uh, in the light. Okay. Um, so it's very important for us to guard the kind of people that we um, bring in. Okay, uh, look at one of the examples of uh, uh, who is a good example of a co-worker in uh, in the New Testament. 
Timothy? Paul, right? Apostle Paul, uh, if you look at uh, most of his letters that he writes, he will begin with a list of people for sending greetings and he will end his letter uh, about, uh, you know, uh, with the list of greetings that people who are co-working uh, along with him. And he always uses, you know, uh, my co-workers, fellow laborers, fellow servants, yoke fellow, fellow helpers, partners, you know, so we see that um, uh, Paul, even though he had a specific calling, what was Paul's specific calling? The apostle to the Gentiles, yes. But even though he had that being an apostle to the Gentiles, he was a kingdom mindset, building the kingdom of um, God. Okay, so that is what we need to uh, do. And we see that even as he writes his letters, he appreciates people who are co-working and co-laboring with uh, him okay so we must recognize honor those people who serve alongside and who labor along with us okay um now a good example of allowing people to come into our labor okay uh, and recognizing them and being careful a good example is david what we read in first chronicles chapter 12 verses 16 to 18 and 22 to 38 can somebody read that please First Chronicles 12, 16 to 18, 22 to 38. Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. And David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me to my enemies... Since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Then the spirit came upon Amasai, chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours, o, J o David. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to your helpers, for your God helps you. So David received them and made them captains of the troop. For at that time they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army like the army of God. All these men of war who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over all Israel, and the rest of Israel were one mind to make David king. Amen. Thank you, Rin. So here we see that, you know, the Spirit of God moved several people to come to David even as he was living in the wilderness, okay? Um, and these are the men who came... And when they came, uh, did David readily accept them? No, he was a little doubtful, right? But what happened? God confirmed it uh, when the Spirit of God came on one person that, and, you know, uh, and um, the chief of captain, and he said, we are yours, O David, we are on your side, O son of Jesse, peace, peace to you. So then, you know, David realized that, yeah, these men are sent by God and he takes them in and he welcomes them. And what happens? Uh, who are these? What did these men grow into being? Yes, a strong army, okay, strong leaders um, uh, for David. So even when David became king, he, you know, most of these men who were there who came to him when he was in the wilderness was running away from King Saul, you know, became uh, the generals in his army, leaders in his kingdom and in his army, okay? So um, even as pe God sends people into our field, it's very important in how we honor such relationships, we need to treat them very carefully and walk wisely and work together, okay? And we are not also, even as we are called to co-partner with each other, uh, we are not here to judge others, okay? Um, uh, we are also here not to compare with other ministries. We, we, uh, we learn that, you know, co-partnering is basically what? It's complementing and not competing with each other okay so avoid comparing with other ministers avoid judging other um, ministers okay uh, a good uh, parable that we can learn from in this context is matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16 uh, we are not going to read this parable because we just studied this parable a few weeks back where this landowner goes um, you know in the morning 
to the market and he sends laborers into his vineyard uh, to labor. Then he sends, he goes again the third hour, he goes the sixth hour, the ninth hour, the eleventh hour, and he looks for laborers in the marketplace and he uh, sends them to work in his field. And at five o'clock, when everybody is going to be paid, he pays all of them the same. Those who come in the morning, those who come in the ninth hour, eleventh hour, sixth hour, third hour, everybody is paid the um, stain. Okay. So what do we learn from this about kingdom building, kingdom partnering, uh, or co-working? You know, it's God who determines who he raises up, who, uh, how he anoints them and the extent of work that he wants them to do. So you might be wondering, why has God called me to go into and labor in somebody else's field? Why can't I start my own ministry? Why can't I start my own church? Why should I work under somebody um, else okay it's God who has sent us or it's God who has appointed that person to that ministry to be the leader God who has sent us to labor in their field uh, in that season so we need to be mindful of what who God has uh, what God has called us in what season of um, life so it's God who determines it's God who anoints and the extent of work that each one of us needs to do okay um so also we see that those, another important thing we can learn from this parable is those who come in the later stage, you know, um, of um, uh, building God's kingdom, they actually, you know, have the benefit of building up on those who have already labored. So suppose you are going at a time where in the field where there is harvest time, it's, it's, it's easy, but those before you have gone, you know, who have gone to that same field, have labored hard, have sown, have, have caused growth, okay? So, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, for, so some of us who come in the later stage in kingdom building and the, in the kingdom of God, the later generations, they have the privilege of building up on those people who have already labored previously, labored previously in the grace of God, in the revelation, in the anointing of the previous generations. So even as we come in a later stage and people have gone, have you know, before us have labored, we need to acknowledge them, honor them, celebrate them, and rejoice uh, in what God has done, okay? Not just thinking that we are great and God is using us mightily, but the people have already sown and uh, labored and acknowledged them okay another thing we need to remember even as we co-partner with people is that we're all gifted differently we need to uh, accept each other's gifts callings functions and also respect them and don't raise up uh, or don't fight against people's gifts and their calling sometimes like prince said we have insecurity you know um, uh, we get jealous of others that's those are the challenges that come when we co-partner and co-work with each other. But we need to see that, hey, that person is flowing in that anointing. It's because of the Holy Spirit. Anointing is a presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't fight that anointing. You will lose. You will not come up. You will not further in, in God's plan for your life. And also you can't fight that person because that person is gifted according to what God has given him the gifts, and, uh, him or her the gifts and the grace. So you're basically fighting whom? God. Yes. So don't, don't be jealous. Don't be, um, you know, cause disunity because of that, because you'll be fighting against the wall and it'll, you know, you'll just be hitting your head and it'll be, um, you know, it'll be your own downfall. Okay. Another thing that we need to keep in mind is don't, uh, you know, argue on, um, um, uh, you know, minor things. Paul is writing to the church at Rome and before he ends his letter in uh, in chapters 14 and 15, you know, he's telling the uh, mature uh, Christians, hey, when you, when, when believers come who are weak in the faith, weak means those who are new to the faith or those who are, you know, have been in the faith for some time, but they're growing, don't argue with them about what food to eat. Now, what one day is better than the other because you observe one day than the other than the or the, uh, than the other don't argue on these minor things for to, in today's age what what are some of the in today's church what are some of the things that we minor things that we argue on yeah, about eating covering, covering the head okay putting the bindi clothes makeup communion 
okay uh, holy spirit worship gifts of the spirit signs miracles and wonders sorry lord stable okay don't argue on these minor things okay don't major on these um, minor things and what paul is saying is hey if you want to do it you do it and it's doing you are doing it unto the lord don't judge somebody else and don't become a stumbling block okay for somebody else okay so if somebody else is new to faith they say they're not going to eat this meat don't eat that meat in front of them you know as a mature christian so that you don't become a stumbling block to them so in, in today's church if um, if we go to north india or you know some churches even in south india and we are ministering and as a woman first of all they won't accept us you know uh, as women who come to teach and imagine if you don't cover the head or you know if you go up uh, to the pulpit or the stage with your shoes or your sandals or your footwear they will think that you know this person is uh, you know really not uh, somebody who is spiritual and they will not listen to you and you wasting your time and what god wants to impart through you they not want to listen so when we go through to different uh, places where we minister we need to be sensitive to the culture and to the way people worship and follow that so that you know we don't become a hindrance uh, to the gospel or to what the holy spirit wants to impart and teach uh, through us so same way even when we are co-partnering with each other don't argue about the doctrine style of worship you know whether we should take holy communion together or whether we should go to the altar kneel down and take or cover our head or all of those things you know is unnecessary come together on the same faith basis the foundations of our faith you know and just partner with each other to transform the city and to build god's kingdom okay now what is the value of partnership in the kingdom okay uh, like karin uh, said partnership brings unity oneness okay uh, when there is unity what happens in the body of christ when there is unity what happens there is growth why is there growth together we are working for the extension of the kingdom yes rin you can take the mic you want to say something okay what happens when there's unity there's why do we see fruit <laughs> ah the power of the holy spirit the anointing of the holy spirit flows through us thank you nina santosh you know the power and the presence of the holy spirit flows in a mighty way okay what else does uh, partnership or uh, co-working with each other bring about co-working with each other strength okay it brings about strength um okay uh, strength against what strength in doing things together also against yes the the the, the, the spiritual forces of darkness okay the enemy what else happens when you partner together you already said it it advances the kingdom of god okay what are some of the things that hinder the a partnership in the kingdom disunity okay why does disunity okay disunity what else selfishness i me my my mentality yes i me mine okay it is me and mine my church my ministry my organization but we're not looking at the bigger picture that we are here to build god's kingdom to partner with others what else comparisons yes competing comparisons with each other competition yes what else what is in for me sometimes we can be super spiritual and wear a mask and say hey i want to partner with you but then what is it what what can i get from that person i can i can get a name and fame that i'm associated with this big pastor big church um people can come to my church you know people in my church will know how great i am because i'm famous because i'm you know i'm uh, uh, you know partnering or uh, you know recognized with another great man of god in the city okay so not looking at you know uh, what is there in for me but how i can give in to building god's kingdom okay and also um you know there can be pretense 
sometimes we can come together as um, in partnering with other men and women of God, but it's basically for us to learn how we can build a church as big as them, what we can do, what we can receive from them. You know, maybe we can receive funds, they can support our church, they can give into our church, they can help us with um, various things. And also, you know, pretense when, hey, when you really have to help them, you're not ready to give in, you draw back, okay? So don't uh, pretend to partner with others just to be, you know, to receive from them. But when it comes for you to give, you know, you, you can draw back, okay? So there are some things that hinder the partnership in the kingdom. Any questions on this lesson? Any questions? Online students, you're very quiet. Nina, John, no responses from you. And no questions from you. Uh, we didn't hear what you said. Okay, any questions? No questions, in-person students? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, Nina is saying just listening. No questions, Nina, John? No comments, nothing, okay? Chira is also there. Sorry? Oh, Sri Radha. Yes, Sri Radha is also an online class today. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to uh, Chapter 8. Okay. The Citywide Church. What is another name for Citywide Church? Local Church. <laughs> <laughs> local Church? No, it's not Local Church. Actually, the Citywide Church comprises of what? The citywide church comprises of huh? kingdom. Citywide church comprises of whom? People, yes. People from where? Yeah, there's another name for the citywide church is body of Christ. And uh, the citywide church comprises of all the local churches. All the local churches in the city is the citywide church. Okay, so that is, uh, and another name for citywide church is what? Body of Christ. Okay, so in the body of Christ, we are called to be, we are body of Christ, that means we are one. Okay, we are one uh, because we are one body, because we have one. Why are we one body? One head. Yes. And we have only one head and uh, we have different parts, okay? And different parts have different functions and different roles and functions, different callings. Um, and is it, is it important for the, city, uh, for the citywide church to be one? Yes. Why? We are all working together for one purpose. One kingdom prince says that, yes. What else? We're here to build only one kingdom. Okay. We'll stop here and we'll come back after break. Thank you.